Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time has been out for a few months now, and as we all know very well, it's an incredibly tough game. No matter where you try to run and hide, nowhere in this game is safe. With the gems and the insanely perfect relics and the flashback tapes, Crash 4 really is out to crush your spirit, your dreams, your legs, and your will to live. But of course, the most devilish of all the challenges is the collection of the time trial relics. And I don't mean the pathetic sapphire, gold, or platinum relics, I'm talking about the purple developer relics, set by Toys for Bob, the nefarious creators of this game. These relics will kick your ass every single time, no matter what level you're in. A few months ago, I made a video called the Top 10 Hardest Time Trials in Crash 4, which as the name implies, listed the 10 time trials that fucked me up the most in my adventure to collect all the purple relics. If you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend you check it out. If you haven't heard, Crash 4 will now be coming to Nintendo Switch, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S in March, and to PC sometime later on. With all this talk of how difficult the game is, I thought it would be nice to avoid that and take a look at the easiest time trials in the game, just to let the new players know that the game is all doom and gloom, but in some places it isn't so bad. I've collected all the developer relics myself, so I think I'm more than qualified to make the judgments here, and I'll link a playlist to all my successful attempts just to prove I'm not a liar. Before we get started, let me just mention a few rules. Firstly, this is based on the developer time trials only. Sapphire, Gold and Platinum Relics are child's play compared to the Purple Relics, so we're only going to give the Purple Relics the spotlight here. Purple is a better colour anyway. Secondly, this list is based entirely on my own opinion. Yours may be different, and that's fine. Leave your own list in the comments section if you want. It might be wrong according to me, but you're entitled to that. The last rule applies to all of my videos. If you find yourself enjoying the video, go ahead and leave a like, and subscribe to the channel as well. You won't regret it, I guarantee it. Anyway, I'm sure you're bouncing up and down with excitement and anticipation, so let's crack on with the list. Kicking off the list in the number 10 spot, we have Stowing Away. Stowing Away as a level is actually really simple. It's mostly just going in a straight line with the occasional puzzle area. It sticks to corridors, which means you really only have one way to go and one route to take. So when it comes to the time trial, it really just boils down to how quickly you can blast through the corridors and avoid the enemies. And you really can just get away with spamming the slide spin most of the time. In that way, it's a very brain dead trial, which is perfect for someone like me. When I completed the developer trial for this level, my time was actually on top of the leaderboard for Xbox players. I may have beaten all the developer times, but I'm not the best at this game, so the fact that I managed to reach the top of the leaderboard means that this trial is very doable, at least in the context of Crash 4. It's still going to fuck you up initially, but once you learn the layout of Stowing Away, you'll be golden. Or purple, since that's the relic you're after. Dino Dash roars in at number 9, which you probably weren't expecting, since as a level it's rather intimidating. Dino Dash is actually on the easier end of the spectrum when it comes to time trials though, and there are a number of reasons for that. The opening segment can be a bit tricky, but once you've nailed that, it's smooth sailing from there. For example, it's very hard to mess up the rail grinding segment, since they literally have one speed, and all you have to do is look for and hit the crates. And if you miss those crates, you might need to take an eye test. As for the chase segments and the side-scrolling segments, you'll usually be able to blast through them with invincibility, since there are plenty of Akuaku crates lying around, so the hazards are generally no trouble at all. On top of that, the developer time is actually rather generous. Even when missing a few crates, I managed to beat it by a comfortable margin. But I know what you're thinking. What about the giant fucking dinosaur? Well, the truth is, the dinosaur can make things harder, since in this game's chase sequences, when whatever's chasing you breaks a time crate, it will not stop the clock, so you have to break those crates yourself. But that's where the invincibility comes in. So basically, if you manage to hold on to your Aku Akus, you'll get through Dino Dash just fine. Number 8, coincidentally, is Rock Blocked. Rock Blocks developer time really is just an easier version of Dino Dash. Ding and Dull's section in this level is overall just easier and more consistent to race through than the beginning of Dino Dash, which is really what the difference comes down to. Since Ding and Dull doesn't have any special moves to speed him up, all you can really do to cut corners is, well, run. And his thick body means he's got a massive hitbox, which makes it a lot easier to destroy time crates and cut corners at the same time. And because all he can do is run and jump in a particular direction, it's a lot easier to control his speed and accuracy. 
As for Crash's section, it really is just the same as Dino Dash. In my successful Rock Blocked run, I missed multiple opportunities to get invincibility and was even slowed down by the mushrooms, and still I managed to beat the developer time anyway. Just like Dino Dash, it seems that Rock Blocked is one of the more generous developer times in the game, and gives you plenty of time to botch things up and fumble through like a rabid dog wearing roller skates. And let's be thankful for that, the game is hard enough as it is. Still in Yuming and Zooming around the Agapus dimension, we have Blast of the Past at number 7. <laughs> that rhymed. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Anyway, Blasts of the Past is a very basic level and belongs to the easier levels in the game no matter which way you look at it. In the time trial, it initially starts off a bit dicey, what with all the vines swinging at awkward intervals that make the timing kind of tricky, but after that it's a cakewalk. Or rather a cake sprint. We are trying to beat a developer here. What makes it so easy is that the level is quite short, and on top of that, a lot of it is made up of rail grinding segments. And, on top of that, you also get to abuse invincibility to make some of the sections that would be difficult pretty bloody simple. So even though the actual developer time may not be as generous as some of the others, Blast of the Past doesn't really do much to hold you back, so as long as you're always moving, that purple relic is as good as yours. Coming in at number 6 is Stay Frosty, which should have been named Stay Cool, but it wasn't and I'm upset about it. Anyway, Stay Frosty is mainly an easy time trial because of how generous the developer time is, and I know how generous it is because my successful run in this level was terrible. My movements were poorly timed, I missed the opportunity to abuse Aku Aku invincibility, I just made so many mistakes, and despite those mistakes, I still managed to beat the developer by about a second. And that's really why this time trial is at this spot on the list. It's not because of the layout of the level or the positioning of time crates or anything like that, it just comes down to the fact that Stay Frosty's developer time gives you a lot of room for error. And I must say I am very, very grateful for that. If you manage to hold on to your Aku Akus and you keep moving, you'll have no problem staying cool here. Booty Call swings in to take the number 5 spot. This is another level that falls into the category of being very generous with its developer time. The way I completed this try was very obviously not optimal. I missed time crates and I wasn't moving through the level as fast as I could have been, but even so I managed to beat the developer by a couple of seconds. In addition to that, because of the way the level is laid out, you really can just hold forward and charge through, tanking hits with Aku Aku where necessary. I think the rule is if the level doesn't have any crazy shortcuts that the developer ghost takes, it's a pretty easy time trial. At number 4 we have Truck Stopped. Honestly, it's kind of hard to put my finger on exactly what makes this trial easy enough for it to deserve to be this high on the list, but I think it's mostly down to how well Torna's section flows. Torna's section is designed in a way that allows a couple of useful shortcuts to shave down the time, and because of that you never really have to stop moving. That's ideal for a time trial I'd say. It's also quite handy to have some of those Aku Aku crates to tank some hits when things get a bit hairy. But what also makes the trial so simple is the atmosphere. I mean realistically, for the entirety of Crash's section here, you're on rails, so your speed is controlled for you. If you manage to break all the time crates, you'll be setting yourself up nicely for a decent time in the end. So yeah, as long as you know where to cut corners, you'll have no problems with truck stopped. Surprisingly for you, but also surprisingly for me, I'm giving the number 3 spot to Cortex Castle. Cortex Castle is often labelled one of, if not the most difficult level in all of Crash 4, up there with Toxic Tunnels and rightly so. It's a very tough level to get through with hazards and traps every step of the way. The Quantum Mask Gauntlet at the very end of the level is especially challenging. But surprisingly and unlike Toxic Tunnels, the developer time trial here is actually really easy for Cortex Castle. Once you probably learn the level, you'll find that there are actually plenty of shortcuts that save an incredible amount of time. My run was far from perfect, but even still I managed to beat the developer by over 20 seconds, so even if you make a few mistakes in your run, saving it is more than possible. But I will admit, without those shortcuts and the admittedly generous developer time, this time trial would be hell. And now for the penultimate level in our list, number 2 goes to Hook, Line and Sinker. Now you might be a bit confused as to why this level is so high on the list. The truth is, this developer time is not very generous. I only made a couple of mistakes, but even so I only just beat it. So you might be asking, how could hook, line and sinker possibly be this easy? Well, when I was talking about truck stopped, I mentioned how Torna's section in that level flowed really well, which allowed for the use of some pretty handy shortcuts. It's very much the same deal here. 
Hook, line and sinker is overflowing with ways to cut corners, ranging from skipping ahead on wall jumps, using the hook shot earlier than you think you'd be able to, and crucially, skipping that one elevator entirely. Even if you aren't getting through the level at a tremendous pace, the use of these shortcuts make it incredibly easy to retake the lead against the developer ghost. So even though I cut it close with my attempt, a successful attempt was not very hard to produce in the first place. And we've reached the end of our list. The number one spot for the top 10 easiest time trials in Crash Bandicoot 4 goes to Run It By You. I think anyone could have seen this coming. I, along with many other people it turns out, managed to beat the developer time for Run It By You accidentally while trying to earn the Platinum Relic. It would sound like I'm bragging if I said this, but I really did beat the developer time here without even trying. I mean, when you're casually going for Platinum Relics, not making a huge fuss about missing time crates or optimizing movement, but end up earning a Purple Relic anyway, then one of two things have happened. It's either A, you're a literal god of the game, or B, the developer time is a joke. I'm going to put my money on B. I'm going to say that the main reason Run It By You is so easy is because it does a lot to control your movement. With the jetboard segments and the armadillo section, there's only so much you can do there to shave down time, and as for the rest of the level, well, there aren't many opportunities to cut corners there either. So really, as long as you're moving in the right direction at a decent pace, you'll beat the developer time no problem. If you want to beat a developer time just to say you did it, Run It By You is definitely the easiest level to beat one on. And there you have it, that was my top 10 easiest time trials in Crash Bandicoot 4. I should probably clarify that all the developer times in Crash 4 are difficult to some degree. There's no way you'd be able to beat one with your eyes closed and your hands tied behind your back, but if you're struggling to beat any, or if you're just looking to find some motivation and ease yourself into it, these 10 levels are a great place to start. They aren't too complicated to navigate, and the times are usually fairly generous, so you shouldn't have too much trouble. And if you're struggling with some levels and want a rough guide on what you should be doing to beat the developers, I have a whole playlist on my channel complete with all 38 developer times beaten, so you can use them as an example if you want. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, I encourage you to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate it when people are supportive, especially the person watching this video right now. Also, don't forget to leave a comment with your top 10 easiest time trials. Your list will no doubt be different from mine, so I look forward to hearing what you think. Anyway, that's enough from me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.